Are you wondering about capital gains tax on real estate? And how much is capital gains tax on inherited property? That's our topic today. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Kim Ward, real estate broker in San Diego, California. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified of my weekly videos and you wouldn't want to miss any of them. Today's topic is capital gains tax on real estate. And you may be wondering how much is capital gains tax on inherited property? Of course, this is a very important question and you need to know the answer so you can potentially avoid any kind of legal and financial issues. Typically, when someone inherits property, the property is worth more than what the loved one, the decedent, originally paid for the property. You may incur capital gains taxes that you wouldn't have if you had been the person living in the property for a long time and then you decided to sell it. But in inherited property is incurred on a specific tax basis, meaning the current value in the current marketplace of that property. The key is if you hang on to that property instead of selling it within a short time of the decedent's death, you may incur capital gains taxes on the difference between the value of the property on the decedent's date of death and the value of the property when you sell it. Please keep in mind, I am not a tax advisor nor an attorney, so I really recommend that you speak to a tax advisor to get absolute accurate answers on your specific circumstances. I'm just gonna give you a bit of an overview and uh, something to think about. Now, one way, if you choose to hold onto the property to avoid the capital gain situation during our current tax laws is to live in the property for two years. After the two years, if you are single, you'll have up to a $250,000 increase that you wouldn't have to pay taxes on. If you happen to be married, that would be $500,000 increase from the date of death appraised value. And then when you plan on selling, you'll need to know the original price of the property, that appraised value as of the date of death, in order to be able to calculate the possible capital gains you might have. Now, let's keep it in real that if a property is worth $250,000 more than as of the date of death, you probably won't have any taxes. I mean, you'd have to live in that property for many years in order to have that kind of a gain. Again, the calculations are devised from the basis, that date of death value. So what's important to you right now as an executor, administrator, or trustee is to determine what the value of the property is right now during the early days of your loved ones passing away. You'll need to know that number if you choose to keep the property for any length of time. And you're going to want to consider the condition of the property, the neighborhood, all those types of things. So it probably is a good idea as a trustee to go ahead and get an appraisal. That way you'll have that basis established. Do not use the assessed value on the property tax bill because that is not the proper value of the property. It does not reflect the true value. If you're in probate, you will have a probate referee appraisal, so you could refer to that as your tax basis. Again, if you're a trustee, you may wanna pay for an appraisal by a licensed appraiser, and that way you'll have that documentation that if you choose to keep the property for five years and live in it, you'll have that evaluation to use when you're gonna pay your taxes after you sell the property, after the five years you've lived in it. If you're wondering about stepped up basis, it is the difference between either the sales price and the current price or the date of death value of the property and the current value of the property when you sell it. For federal and state tax purposes, when a property is acquired in an inheritance, it does get a stepped up basis right then, again, that date of death value, not the original value that your loved one paid for the property. For instance, if your loved one purchased the home for $200,000, but in the current marketplace, the date of death value is $500,000. That's gonna be your basis for tax purposes. If you waited a few years and you sold that property for $600,000, you're going to have a $100,000 difference between the basis and your sales price. That would be what you would need to pay taxes on. But again, if you lived in it and you're single, it's $250,000 gain that you would not have to pay taxes on. And if you are married, 
it jumps up to $500,000. So in that particular case, you probably wouldn't have any capital gains tax situation. Again, be sure you speak with your attorney and a tax professional so that you get accurate answers for your specific situation. And I wish you luck with this. Again, give me that thumbs up like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and hit the bell button. See you next week.